Selma's number one rated newscast, broadcasting live from 12 studios. This is News 12 at 9 p.m. Good evening and welcome to News 12 at 9. Hope all of you are having a very Merry Christmas. I'm Kristen Weaver. Dan has the night off. A local teacher killed in a three-vehicle accident on Christmas Eve. News 12's Andrew Freeman spoke with a few of her co-workers about the legacy she leaves behind. Disbelief, can't believe it. Just don't want to believe it. 52-year-old Gail Baker was on her way home from shopping with two of her grandkids Sunday morning when she got into a wreck with two other vehicles near the Dollar General on Highway 70 in Lone Grove. Firefighters say her two elementary school-aged children were taken to an Oklahoma City hospital. We're told they're going to be okay, but Baker didn't survive. How? What were they doing? What caused it? Lone Grove police couldn't be reached for details on the accident. Baker worked at the Chickasaw Head Start School in Ardmore for 15 years, a place her co-workers say won't be the same. Three, four, and five-year-olds, how do they going to understand? When I get to work, you know, I, I see her car first thing, and I just, I've already been thinking, you know, I'm dreading seeing, you know, not seeing her vehicle there. They tell us Baker was passionate about her work. She wanted to make a difference. She just love the you know love the kids and just had a, they had a special place in her heart and passionate about life Henri. <laughs> yeah, stubborn I'm stubborn a little bit but she Very would caring she'd do anything for anybody baker leaves behind a husband of 23 years two adult daughters who live in oklahoma city and a son who was a senior at lone grove high school she sheltered him protected him kind of from the world you know she and she would tell us about that firefighters say the two other drivers involved were treated and released at the scene funeral arrangements for baker have not yet been finalized we're a big family and we just have to be there for each other and be there for the kids in lone grove andrew freeman News 12. A woman in Gainesville has her Christmas decorations stolen from her front yard. Victoria Martin is the latest of several locals who reached out to us about laser light projectors being stolen this month. The new mother says she spent $150 on the decorations. They were swiped off her porch Friday. She and many others tell us next year they will no longer be decorating. But not enough Grinches in Texoma to keep Santa away. The big guy stopped by Mansville this morning delivering toys that had been collected by a local tattoo shop. Ho, ho, ho! Santa Claus is here! For 10 years, Wookiee's Tattoo Shop in Mansville has gathered toys for the underprivileged children in their area. This year, they gathered the most yet, enough for 80 kids. While he doesn't use a sleigh, Roy Justice has helped deliver those gifts as Santa Claus for eight of those years. He delivered the gifts all across town all morning using a list given to them by the School of Kids in Need. I just woke up and I saw Santa Claus. When I came in here, I just started going crazy. I was pretty cool and excited because we never, we, nobody's ever did that before. I wouldn't have got it if Santa didn't bring it. Wookie's Tattoo Shop is glad to see the program grow so large. They tell us they hope the trend continues. Members of the Fannin County community gather for a free meal for the holidays. News 12 Sarah Humphrey has that story. About 300 people gathered at the First United Methodist Church in Bonham on Christmas Day. It's Christmas, right? Spirit of giving, it's doing what Jesus would want us to do. It was the 19th year for the free Christmas meal. It was served from 11 to 2 in the afternoon on Monday. I just enjoy it because I love to sit and talk to the people in the community. It's really neat because we do this once a year, so you see people maybe you don't see all the time. The group also delivered hot meals to front doors for families. Organizers say donations help keep this tradition alive. It's a great community and it's great working with all these wonderful people and um, I've been doing this seven years so and I've enjoyed it every, every year. In Bonham, Sarah Humphrey, News 12. And there was more cheer than grinchiness around Texoma this season. The Anna Police Department adopted a family for Christmas and spent last week cleaning up their yard just in time for the holidays. Julie Ann is a single mother of four. She, she's a disabled combat veteran who lives in Anna and had just found out she has stage four terminal cancer. When police heard her story, they wanted to do something to help out. So they cleaned up her entire backyard, which was trash from tenants who rented from the home. Police say being able to give back is what makes their job worth it. 
we're all here because we're passionate about what we do. We want to give back. Um, and this is the way we can do it and to show our appreciation for a veteran uh, who needed help. Now, the homeowner didn't want to be interviewed, but tells News 12 the help is the biggest blessing she could get. Now, if you want to help, she's now looking for a bone marrow match. We have more info posted on our website and the KXII app. Well, there's no Christmas break for crews battling the Thomas Fire in Southern California. It's now the largest fire in state history. Jamie Yuckus met some of the firefighters. It is not how nearly 1,600 firefighters expected to spend the holiday. Woke up on a cold, hard cement floor surrounded by snoring men. Not how I thought I'd wake up on a Christmas morning ever. Marquis Moss is almost 700 miles away from her home in central Utah. This is an opportunity that doesn't come very often, so I'm glad to be here. Since December 4th, the Thomas Fire has destroyed over 1,000 homes and buildings. At least one firefighter died. And for others, weeks on the line have taken a toll. Why did you volunteer to be here on Christmas? Uh, so that other people didn't have to. Merry Christmas, everybody. Hotshot firefighter J.P. Blair didn't have to be here. So you're here for Christmas and New Year's. And my birthday and my anniversary and my wife's birthday. Scott DeHaas has spent more than 90 days fighting fires from his native Oregon to here in California. So spending time with other firefighters, reading cards from a grateful community, and seeing a surprise visitor was a welcomed escape. I've been working in the woods seven years. I never got to meet you. Like most here, he'd rather be with his family. This may not be the only holiday firefighters spend on the fire line. They could be here through New Year's, with flames not expected to be put out until the first week of January. Jamie Ucas, CBS News, Ventura, California. Well, checking weather, we're in the freezer again tonight. Chief Meteorologist Steve Lenore joins us in the Weather Center with the latest. Steve? That's right. Definitely a snuggly special tonight, Kristen. The temperatures already down around freezing and most of Texas summer hovering between about 30 and 34 degrees. Winds aren't too strong, thankfully. They're running from the east southeast about five miles per hour. As you can see here, uh, highest wind I could find was 12 miles per hour there in Ringley, so not too bad. And the windshield department, it's just cold. And in fact, temperatures won't fall a whole lot more tonight. Level off around 30. Cloud cover will thicken overnight. You can see the moon out there right now. You won't be able to see much of the moon or the sun tomorrow as we stay cloudy and chilly high tomorrow. Only 41 degrees, even colder, though, by the weekend. Thanks, Steve. Well, for millions of Catholics around the world, the Pope's Christmas message is one of the highlights of the holiday. As Ben Lewis reports from London, Pope Francis touched on global political conflicts this year, saying the winds of war are blowing. Tens of thousands of faithful in St. Peter's Square and millions more around the world watch the Pope's annual message of peace. Buon Natale. Pope Francis once again touched on sensitive political subjects. He called for a negotiated two-state solution to end the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Telling worshippers he prays dialogue will resume between the parties that would allow for peaceful coexistence. Tensions in the region have flared in recent weeks following President Trump's decision to move the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem. The Pope also urged leaders to work towards de-escalating the crisis on the Korean Peninsula. He says he hopes mutual trust will increase. Not all of the Pope's message was focused on conflict. He urged the world's 1.2 billion Roman Catholics to show humility in their lives and asked followers to make our world better for future generations. Ben Lewis, CBS News. Coming up on News 12 at 9, the Museum of the Bible opens in Washington, the controversy behind who's funding it. And real quick, let's take a look at viewer photos. This one is sent in from Jay Perry. You can see Allison's first Christmas here underneath the tree. We'll go on to the next photo right here. This one is from Zach. Um, you can see Zach is not having a very good time with Santa right there, but you know, it's Christmas, so he's doing the best he can. Now let's take a look at one other photo. This one is from Lonel. It's the sweet little granddaughter right here. She's helping decorate the tree this Christmas. You guys can also send your photos to us. It's kxii.com slash photos, and we will be right back.